Thanks, Richard. Um, I think uh, what I also found interesting from, um, from Hans's introduction was that uh, he referred to management commentary and that actually already uh, quite a few concepts of, uh, of uh, the, IR, the IR framework are, were already in the practice statement in 2010. Um, so it made me think, would there be any role for the IRC if the ISB would incorporate the IR framework in their management commentary practice statement? What do you think? Would you see other roles for the IRC? Uh, well, first of all, good morning. Um, <laughs> I, unlike Hans, I've not got a long speech. We're doing this through question and answer, and hopefully that will be more interesting for everyone. But I am really pleased to, to be here with you, Mark, uh, a good friend and colleague over a long time, to me personally as well as to IRC. Uh, Olivier, the same, a, a friend over, I think, over 10 years. And I think it's, um, uh, for those of you who know my background, I was based here in Brussels for 20 years. And so to be back here uh, with my friends, uh, who used to be called Fee for all the years that I remember, and now are called the Council Europe, is fantastic. Uh, and um, uh, I, I uh, didn't know Hans before I took up this job in any detail. But we're actually very, very close together. And I think it's important, whether we're talking about the Management Commentary Practice Statement, which since 2012 has already committed to support integrated reporting. So what you've been talking about this morning, Hans, uh, which, uh, if it happens, will be a closer alignment, I strongly encourage. We are already partners. We don't, you know, the, the answer to your question is we're partners together in the corporate reporting dialogue. ISB itself is a member of the International Integrated Reporting Council uh, and, and fashions our discussions. And again, we have that same level of personal relationship. And I suppose the thing I would, would say in response to your question, then, if you look at what the core elements of the core are, that Mark, you very rightly summarized in your introduction, business model, strategy, uh, key risk, key governance information. Whether it's what you said this morning and the Cogito document says, whether it's what the IR framework says, or whether it's what the management commentary practice says, about 90% the same. And by the way, for the FRIC comments, the UK strategic report is as well. And of course, it's important that we understand the differences, we learn, we develop, we support. Of course, that's important. But I think we should acknowledge that we're talking very, very much about the same thing. Now, we want, IRC, our coalition, wants this to get closer and closer to financial reporting. Um, we like the partnership that we have with the ISB and the IFRS Foundation, and therefore we absolutely want to encourage that uh, development if they make that decision in the next weeks or months. Um, and of course, I'm sure they will draw on expertise in that. We see this as ex an exciting opportunity. But the I it's a non-binding statement. Um, it's one of a, a set of actions in the whole debate about the future of corporate reporting in the world. And I think well, we shouldn't raise the expectations, expectations so high that this is going to be the sort of end game. It's going to be a very important part of the next, next phase. We strongly support it, but let's have a very realistic understanding of the expectations about what it will achieve. Right, maybe in a, in a wider uh, sense and a wider perspective, uh, from the ISC's perspective, how, how do you see the future of corporate reporting as we are discussing here today? Um, no one knows the end game, right? If we did, then uh, uh, um, uh, we wouldn't be having this conference. We're all about fashioning it and shaping it. Accountants here appear uh, yourself making a contribution to this in what I regard as a superbly important initiative, not just today, but over, over the years. And I think uh, leading a global organisation, Europe plays a really important <coughs> role in the world in shaping what's happening globally. And I think uh, that's very important. And I have to say on behalf of the profession, the profession is playing a very important role in guiding the future reporting. For all of those reasons, this is an important initiative. But even this initiative itself and the, the report that's come out today doesn't claim to have all the answers. And I just want to say, neither does integrated reporting ourselves claim that we have all the answers. But I do think that we are in a period where the integration of non-financial with financial is in the air, right? You talked about um, uh, uh, times are changing hands, right? Integrated reporting is blowing in the wind, 
<laughs> Sorry for that. I had to do it. It just shows we're a similar age, I think. Um, it's going to happen, in all seriousness. How it happens, I think we don't, we don't know. I think your suggestion that there's a, a non-financial standard setter alongside a financial standard setter is a possible future scenario. I think if you add 5, 10, 15 years on, your suggestion that today the intangibles can't be as predictable, certain, quantifiable, maybe it'll look different at that stage and it will all come under your umbrella. Who knows that? And maybe some sort of hybrid, which is where IRC is a global coalition and that's what we are today. Maybe it will stay in that space with, it, with dialogue being at the, the forefront. I don't know the exact final outcome of all of that. But if I was to make a plea to the, to the conference, in all of the um, uh, core and more discussions so far, it's talked about IRC as the most promising initiative. We, of course, like that. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I think I know, because of my relationship with Olivier, right, there has never been a sense of competition between these two concepts. And where Accountancy Europe has been has been to say we want an evidence base. We don't want to just say this is do integrated reporting. We want to have a dialogue, and we want that to come back to us rather than us put it out. I think that's a perfectly proper position to take. But when I look at the um, responses to the consultation, which are all published on your website, almost uniformly they say they want integrated, uh, they want integrated reporting to be the model of, of, the, uh, of the future. And so, for example, um, uh, the Danish, um, your Danish member says that it's all the same issues as, uh, as integrated reporting. Business Europe say it's the same issues. Integrated reporting only established a few years ago. Beneficial if it was, there was more discussion on integrated reporting. SEMA says that they're firmly banned with integrated reporting. IFAC says the same objectives of integrated reporting and core should be based on it. ACCA says, I won't go on for too long, don't worry. <laughs> so strong support for the integrated reporting framework. ITW, the German member, says I, I already yeah. provides the framework for the core report. CFA Institute, the same. ICAW, the same. KPMG, the same. And Ovo Nordisk, the same. Oh, and my challenge, my challenge there is, is this now the time to move on the wording a bit? We don't claim we have all the answers, but to avoid any sense of confusion and competition, which is what this initiative says it's trying to do, to move it beyond the wording, the most promising initiative. And I just push that out towards you. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, I, I think, as you I think suggest the same, uh, there's, no, there's not any pushback against integrated reporting, and everyone sees it as there the is future one, by of... There's by the way, Vim, which is the Norwegian member that says it should one? be even more integrated. And forgive me if I quite like okay. that criticism. Okay. Uh, but as we are talking here today also about, you know, this, this link between financial yeah. and, and non-financial, what do you think uh, is the IRC's role there or IRC's uh, commitment? So far, you have primarily focused on the long-term uh, investor. You could broaden your scope. You could take the role that IRSB was already uh, invited to. H how do you see that to, to really further this integration? Okay. Um I'll say a word about ESG and then a word about the investor focus, because mm -hmm. I think you yeah. asked both in all of that. Um, uh, and I, I, I take all the same health warnings that Hans did about there are definitions about ESG and sustainability, but again, let's not focus entirely on those. We've, we know what we're talking about. But it, if there is a, a criticism I'd have of ESG reporting, sustainability reporting, um, is there really an understanding of the risks and opportunities in terms of the value of company? Is there really the connectivity? Is there really the understanding of materiality? And that's what integrated reporting is working on. And the reports are improving year by year. And as Mark said, it's already 1,600 companies globally. Very impressive. But that's the area that we do want to, Im to improve on, to make not sure that we don't just have metrics in some of the space, mm -hmm. as Hans talked about, but that we really understand that concept of connectivity. And it, people use ESG, it is the, probably the most popular term that is used. But we also talk about 
the hidden capitals, which don't neatly fit into the ESG space, which is human capital and intellectual capital. And I would argue that those are the two capitals of IRC6 that are probably most important for value driving in the future, and speaking to a European audience, are most important for the competitiveness of the European economy. And so I think there is a, a big role there in terms of us facilitating, this is our role, facilitating, catalyzing, stimulating, encouraging the metrics to get a bit better. We don't prescribe, but we think they can get better. And I would particularly talk about the hidden capitals. Now, your point about the investor focus, and it's a key question you wanted to put to me, and I, uh, it should be for this conference. We've come to a very clear view over a number of years, before my time, but it's staying the same on my watch, that the investor focus is the key audience for integrated reporting. And I know there are some people, probably some in this audience, but many outside, who say the world is changing uh, and the multi-stakeholder approach is key, the interdependencies and the interrelationships. And I've said that many times myself. Uh, myself. Yes, the world is changing it is, and globalisation is, is, is changing for all, of, for all of business. But, and this is why I 100% agree with Hans, if you try and invent a form of reporting that treats all stakeholders as equal, it may well be that you end up with a form of re reporting which is credible to none. And what I see over a three-year painstaking process of the framework being drawn up between 2010 and 2013 worked out is, yes, stakeholder relationships are highly important and relevant for the company, and they are different and are changing. But if we analyse the value creation uh, uh, outcome, consequence of, of stakeholders, that is what gets the company to properly understand it and to report upon it. And then the issue is then, do the stakeholders criticise the companies or criticise us because we're not taking their concerns carefully enough, we're only concerned about value creation? And I'll tell you one story. We, our, our, um, our partner in France is Oyoplas, the uh, um, uh, financial uh, centre coordinator for the city of Paris. And Oyoplas held a conference that I was at where they, a really ex interesting example was given about an NGO, I won't name it, but a, quite a radical NGO that you would think would say that the reporting should be for the stakeholders, not just for the investors, right? And what they actually said was, damn right it should be for the investors, because we want to know what's being said to the investors because we know that's what the companies treat as important. And if they're saying it to the investors, we know that information is, to be tr is true. Now, that wasn't being said by all of us. It was being said by quite a radical NGO. And I think it's the credibility of the information which is provided, financial information for the investor, which we lose at our peril. And that's why IRC very strongly keeps an investor focused, what we think is the key audience for the, re for the report. There is some room for any of you in the room who has a question to either Richard or Mark uh, or, or Hans. Uh, if not, we have an early lunch, but um, if you have, then uh, please feel welcome. Uh, and please, um, uh, so it's on the left under your cover. If you could just say your name, your organization, then and ask uh, quickly your question. Thank you. Go ahead. Doesn't it work with the microphone under your cover? In the yeah, and then push on the... Um, Test one. Yes, yeah. it works. There we go. My name is Robert Blow from the Netherlands MBA. Uh, you've talked about the uh, value creation for investors. How does that relate to the more known concept of shareholder value? Um, uh, that's a great question. Um, shareholders want value, so in that sense that's the the relationship and then the whole debate is about the value creation in the long term and not just uh, in the short term. Being Eurocentric in this audience, we're very used to the model where shareholder primacy is at the fore. You go to many regions and countries across the rest of the world and the sorts of advanced capital markets that we're very comfortable for and used to are not the primary way that the economy is... is um, uh, is organised, and that's why 
just talking about shareholder primacy in some other parts of the world and some other countries of the world um, uh, isn't sufficient. But what I would say is this. There is a very healthy, constructive and interesting debate going on about purpose in business, uh, about corporate objective, um, uh, and about the definition of fiduciary duty. And with both uh, the Purposeful Corporation uh, initiative in the UK, but also the Purpose of the Corporation initiative closely aligned here, here in uh, Brussels, uh, we've been very much part of those debates. But that is, and it comes back to the quote that Mark, you gave in your introduction about investors changing themselves. And this, I suppose, is where IIC stands. We think it is changing. We think investors do understand that what is today sometimes called non-financial has an incredible impact on value creation, whether it's for the shares or for other owners. But what we think is that we, it's not our job to preach to investors, you should do that. They, they want to do it, and they're You'll changing see the development. it. We should listen to them. Yeah. We should be in dialogue with them. They've been part of defining the IR framework. They're part of our coalition and a growing part of our coalition today. And that change will come. But the change will come not because we're preaching from the outside, but because they're increasingly realising that for right. themselves. Yeah. Yeah. OK, good. Another question here from the front row. Yeah, it's just that one. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Wim. J just a question, actually, how you reconcile you know, the long-term value creation agenda with that? Uh, because as, as Hans, I think, very rightly said, times are changing. If you look back in the 60s, the average time of uh, shareholding was about eight years. And I think now it's 22 seconds. So how does that stack up? with long-term value creation and our expectations of shareholders behaving as responsible owners? Um, th th there are countervailing forces at play. And we all talk about investors and investment as if it's one holistic, monolithic whole. Of course, it isn't. How I see it at the moment is that there probably are about 60% of, of in the investor market who are just interested in frequency and short-term return and, it's, and passive, a passive approach to investing. And that's not going to ch largely change in the short term, who knows, in the very long term. There's about just under 5% of the investment market, which today we would call the responsible investor market or the ESG investor market. And I we all know that's growing exponentially and terribly important, but it's not yet the mainstream. And there's probably about 40%, you can have an argument about a discussion, who are active investors. And they do believe in stewardship. Uh, and they're increasingly involved in the sorts of discussions that we've, we've put this morning, but are not fully convinced, or not everyone within them are, are fully convinced. And that's where the change is happening. And the role of IRC and the concept of integrated reporting is to move it away just from the responsible investment ESG corner, important as it is, I don't detract from that at all, and they're part of our coalition, but to try and move it into the mainstream, which is where I'd put it into the 40%. And if we're successful in doing that over the years, those figures will begin, begin to change again. Okay, can I? Hans, sure. So, while it's true there is, of course, there's a huge amount of short-termism in the, in, the, in the market, especially given the fact that so many uh, investors are truly not investing their own money, but other people's money. So that, and then lots of in incentives for short-termism uh, around, uh, yet do not underestimate that there are also quite a few investors that go for the long term. Mm. For example, those investors that have invested in uh, Tesla, they have expectations for the long term. Amazon, uh, for a long, long time, did not make any money. And yet investors have continued to value the company very highly, exp believing in its business model and that it would over time create a lot of value. So it is easy to say yeah, it's all short term, uh, all these investors are short term. I think the leading, the vanguard of investors are uh, often still uh, long term, have a long term vision. Warren, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Buffett. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett. Obviously, obviously, uh, you know, 
classical uh, example of a long-term investor, almost never divests uh, his uh, in, in investments. So they're still there. Right. Maybe um, a, a final question, um, uh, Richard, I'd have uh, to you just b before mm. lunch, relates actually to the work that, uh, that Mark introduced this morning, the follow-up on the core and more and the call to action. Any short, concise, as the IRC, please, for uh, feedback on that? Um, this is my sort of challenge, but it's a challenge amongst friends, let's be honest about it. But and especially with hands on the stage, so I'll, I'll do, do another Bob Dylan one. It's like a Rolling Stone. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, this global coalition came together in 2010. 70 senior people and organisations, including the ISB, including the World Economic Forum, including the World Bank, including major businesses, Nova Nordisk, Nordisk and HP, SBC and Unilever, and all the rest of them. All of the accountancy industry, IFAC, the future of corporate reporting, says, says IFAC, um, and the key investors, including BlackRock, the leading private sector investor, mm -hmm in the world, and they all said, we're going to make this thing happen, and we're going to make it work. And I think if there's a confusion that I need to help overcome, then it's not saying that, to, that the IR framework today is perfect. You know, our framework is better than theirs and by ours. That's not where we stand at all, but is that well enough understood? We stand for the concept of integrating financial and non-financial and this global coalition changing the corporate reporting system in the world in order to make integrated reporting the global norm. And I think you talk about a roadmap, Mark, yeah. and I think you're right. Yeah. But if my comment back to everyone here is that I think we've begun down the road. I think we have a roadmap. I think we are the stone that is rolling. And that what I would like to see is a more explicit link between the core and more work and the uh, and integrated reporting itself. And I think one of the questions for the conference is, who's going to take responsibility for taking this forward? Because the ideas are great. And my answer to that is that uh, we, not me or an organisation, but the global coalition which has come around integrated reporting, which includes the financial as well as the non-financial, it includes the sustainability standards, says, is, with that, our corporate reporting dialogue, as Hans, you might say, Ian will talk this afternoon, we've gone quite a long way down the road for the coordination that you want. And we want your backing. We want greater visibility for that, greater understanding for that. We thank you for encouragement. We, we want you and the whole profession as represented in this room and all your members to play that part in doing it. And I promise you, uh, we will listen, we do involve, and we will act. Thank you very much. Another invitation to you, Mark. Yeah. I, I was just saying, can I maybe just add something to your question? I know you're asking the question, but in, in the call for action, uh, I made, th so we, we make the suggestion that there is this role for regulators. But I know when you, when you, when you, you have been discussing it in the past, uh, you said, well, we have to be careful. Uh, let the market first experiment and let mm -hmm. things develop uh, organically before regulators step in. And I think we, we probably all agree with that. But if I look at, at how international accounting centers came about, uh, there was a quantum leap at the moment when IOSCO said, we're going to go into an improvements project. And once we actually have done this improvement project, we will have a look at these standards again. And we were actually going to uh, mm -hmm. apply those in our markets, and then the European Commission and others came along and said yes. Uh, and that was actually when we had a global system of, of standards, right? So, uh, just be interested in, in your thinking on that parallel. Do you think actually that there is a similar role, you know, here for the likes of IOSCO or others, the European Commission, who are here present here, you know, to at some point play an encouraging role? Because that's what we were suggesting. Yeah. So I don't know who of you I want to react to that. I whether it's really on the radar of IOSCO at this moment. Yeah. I think they find it all very scary. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, for perhaps the same reasons that I'll, I also find it a little bit scary. But yes. um, uh, yeah, I, do, I don't think uh, I don't think it's uh, on the on the uh, on the radar of regulators at this. Uh, who at should this take moment. a similar? Is there anyone you could think of who should take a similar? Initiative as IOSCO did at the time for the financial standards. Yeah, I think the difference is, is that much of ESG reporting started as public policy initiatives, and once it's there, you know, not not in the not in the field of the securities regulators, but more 
you know, politicians and, and uh, uh, their civil servants. And once it's there, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, to, to reach, uh, to, to have a global community of regulators, for example, to try to get harmonization there. Okay. Mm -hmm. but, the, but, you know, perhaps it's just too early to tell. I'm in the too early to tell school. Um, uh, but what we know is that the FRC from the UK has said that integrated reporting is consistent with the strategic report. We're currently doing a, an explicit mapping exercise. We can show the market that. What we know is that the Indian financial services regulator, SEBI, has called for the top 500 of their companies to do integrated reporting. The, when I went to Malaysia, it was the financial services regulator that hosted the uh, the uh, uh, visit and is promoting integrated reporting is, in right, that country. So, but I think perhaps, yeah, perhaps for in integrated reporting yeah. as opposed to ESG reporting, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. there is more hope. Okay. Right. Because, yeah. And That's right. Yeah. Good. I, I, I'm glad to hear you say it. We move, um, we okay. move into the lunch with a bit of hope. <laughs> And a key question, and I think we're going to address that in the afternoon, which is uh, who's going to take that role to further uh, integrate? So they all step now off the uh, stage. But please uh, thank again the speakers. Enjoy your lunch.